On today's show, we're going to be comparing an actual macro lens to an extension tube and find out which is better, what the advantages are, and if you actually need to buy a macro lens if you want to get close. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, all about photography and video and live streaming and all things related. It is a Monday morning. It is time for a Monday show. How y'all doing today? Hope you had a great weekend. We are talking about macro ring, macro lenses and extension tubes, the comparison of the two. So I think everybody knows what a macro lens is, right? A macro lens is a specialized lens that allows you to get really, really, really close to things. So if you're photographing bugs or flowers or jewelry or anything you want to get really close to, that's what a macro lens does. Macro lenses are awesome. Macro lenses can also be quite expensive. And if you don't do macro photography all the time, then it can seem like a kind of a unnecessary investment. The kind of thing like, yeah, I'd like to have one if I really need it. Oh, I don't know. Now, before I forget to say it, it is worth pointing out that a macro lens is also an all-purpose lens, right? So a 30 millimeter, we we'll see where is it? Here we go. Here's a 30 millimeter macro. This is a 30 millimeter lens all the time. It doesn't have to be used for close-ups. You can take regular pictures with it too, and this is actually going to come up in play throughout the uh, the comparison today is quite, quite an important feature. But it's worth considering if you are looking for a lens of a particular focal length. It might be worth considering buying the macro version of that lens, the macro variant of that lens or that similar focal length, if you want to have the ability to get super close. What you lose is generally focus speed, and only because on a macro lens, the gearing inside the lens is quite vast. Right, to be able to go from something this close to focus to way out there in focus, the lens has to spin a long way. So it's going to take longer to go from its infinity point all the way back to its closest point and then all the way back out to infinity. A regular lens would only go from you know, infinity back a little bit and 40. So it's just less of a rack. So it's going to focus more quickly just because it has physically less distance to cover. So that's one kind of drawback of using a macro as a regular lens. But other than that, just keep in mind that a macro lens can be a regular lens. So just one of those things to think about. OK, so that's what a macro lens is. An extension tube is, well, you can see here, I've just put my finger through the lens. It is a tube. It is quite literally simply a separator between a lens, a regular lens, and your camera. So here I have a, let's take the shade off of here. This is the Panasonic 25 millimeter f1.4 lens. This obviously would normally just smack onto the camera. The extension tube allows us to put some space between the lens and the body. Now we've talked about this extensively. I'm not going to go into it any more than that. I will point you to a show that we already did specifically about these tubes, the Makey tubes that we're going to be using today. So if you want to learn more about the tubes themselves, watch that show. You'll learn all about those. Um, but that's about all I'm going to say as far as what they do. They just separate the lens from the camera, allowing that lens to focus more closely than it was originally designed. So with that said, now let's take a look at some quality differences, because this is where it's going to be most important. The quality, I was trying to do like the three C's, cost, convenience, and quality. Uh, anyway, that was that it didn't really work out. But we'll get to cost. We're going to start off with quality. So let us start by taking a look at the 30 millimeter macro lens. So you'll see up here the way these slides are written out. It says the top macro lens. It's the Panasonic macro 30 millimeter f 2.8. You can see here at its closest focusing distance. This is as close as I can get it to some newspaper. It is about one inch away from the front lens element. Uh, more importantly, it is four inches away from the sensor plane or the film plane. So see that little circle with the line on it that the arrow is pointing to? That is where the sensor sits. So you're about four inches away at its closest focusing distance. What this gives you of a photograph of a piece of newspaper is a very close up picture of the newspaper. Now this is not particularly interesting. However, I want you to notice that it is edge to edge quite sharp. Uh, maybe it's ever so slightly softer at the edges than in the center. This was shot at f2.8, so it's wide open. So I could have stopped it down a little bit to gather a little extra depth of field, but I didn't want to do that. Just shooting it wide open. So you see it's essentially edge to edge sharp, yeah, just a little bit of soft at the edges there. But this is, for all intents and purposes, superb. Then we move into the extension tubes. So this is the 10 millimeter extension tube. And let me remind you of this part of it. These tubes come in different lengths, different distances. The pack that I've pointed to before and that we'll link to down below as well is a dual pack that is a 10 millimeter and a 14 millimeter. You can use the 10, you can use the 14, you can combine them and make for 24. The kicker with these things is you cannot have more millimeters of distance here than the focal length of the lens. 
So if you're using, as I was here, a 25 millimeter lens, I could use the 10, I could use the 14, or I could combine them and use the 24. That is all under 25, that's fine. If I was to take something like this lens, this is the, not that one, uh, here, let's say this one, the 12 to 60 lens, and I put it on here, if I put the 14 millimeter spacer on here, since 12, anything, well, yeah, 14 millimeter, anything at 12 or 13 or under, under 14, I would not be able to focus that closely. Right? I wouldn't, it, the camera simply wouldn't focus that close, so then nothing would be in focus. Uh, so that's just one of those things. If you are using it with a wider lens, you've got a, I don't know, a 15 millimeter lens you want to put that on, you could use the 14, you could use the 10, but you couldn't combine them to make 24. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, so back to this. So with the 10 millimeter extension, we are, what is that, about an inch and a half, we'll call it, from the front of the lens. More importantly, we look at the distance to the focal plane. So it's four and, we'll call it four and three quarter inches. So it's a little bit farther away, not massively farther away, but it is a bit farther. Now keep in mind too, we are comparing a 25 millimeter standard lens with the tube to a 30 millimeter macro, millimeter standard, so this is the difference. I don't have a 25 millimeter, millimeter macro or a 30 millimeter standard, so this is the closest I could get. But um, so they just keep that in mind as well. But it's not a big deal, but it's just, just worth pointing out. Uh, anyway, so the closest photo looks like this. So that is considerably farther away than we are getting with that closest focus point on the macro lens. But we're only at 10 millimeter, right? We've got room to grow. So that's our closest, but also look at the sides. The sides of this, the edges of the shot are definitely a bit softer. Not massively softer, but they are definitely a bit softer than that straight up macro lens was. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the farthest point. Now this is very, very interesting. Notice the difference between these sh two shots as far as how much more is in the frame. And I'm just toggling back and forth. So there's the, if you look at the words in the middle, whose family is right in the middle, the kind of the have and whatever word before that is cut off. Zoom out, you can still, you can see the full word have, you can see part of the word before, so it's not that much farther away. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about the maximum distance that I can get from the subject. So with a macro lens, I can get really close, I can get farther away, I can get farther, I can get farther, I can get as far away as I want to. With the extension tubes, you have a very limited amount of focal range. I can focus about this close away to about this close away. I can't focus any farther. And what that means is that you have such a restricted area of where you can focus that if you suddenly want to take a picture of something that is farther away, you have to remove the lens, remove the ring, reattach your lens to get that shot. So in my case, I'm out with the family doing stuff with the kid, then my kid does something cute, and if I had that combination on there, I could not have done that. But because on that shot, I had the macro lens on, the true macro, I was able to go from shooting here to shooting my kid over there, and I'm able to get the shot. So it's a very important thing to consider. When you're talking about all around, all purpose use, the macro rings are very limited. Not only do you not get as close, but you cannot get as far either. So you're restricted to a very narrow range. So just wanted to point that out. It's one of those very, very important differentiators between them. Okay, let's move on here to the 24 millimeter extension. So now I've put the 10 and the 14 together. This is 24 millimeters. So this is getting me as close as I can get with this combination with the 25 millimeter lens. And that is getting, so we'll go back, you can see that is uh, called half an inch from the front of the lens, but more importantly, the, f the film plane, the, um, the sensor plane is about four and a quarter inches away. So we are at this point very, very close, very similar to what we had with the 30 millimeter lens. We are with the full 24 mil extension, very similar, very close to the subject, distance to the subject from the film plane. Again, more important than from the front of the lens. But here's the picture that we get out of this. You ready for this? Notice how soft that is. Look around the edges especially, bit of distortion, a lot of softness happening, and just to compare it to the original photo shot with the macro lens, there's the same shot with the macro lens. So huge, huge difference in there. So as you get farther and farther away with the separating the lens from the sensor, you really are using less and less of the actual lens to resolve the image. You are using it in a way that it clearly isn't intended. The optics in any lens are designed to focus on a focus plane, not to focus it somewhere else, some other distance away. So you definitely start to lose things in there. So that right there, you might look at that and go, oh, well, forget about it. There's no point in having an extension tube then. It's, it's obviously horrible quality, but it isn't. It's really around the edges that things start to fall apart. And you're probably not really going to be photographing newspaper. You're probably going to be photographing actual real subjects, in which case, if you're really 
more focusing on the center of the frame, a flower, a bug, whatever it is, and the edges go a little bit soft, well, it's probably going to be OK. The other advantage you have is that you can take your extension ring and make any lens a macro lens. Right? If I buy this macro lens, I have a 30 mil macro. End of discussion. Whereas with the extension tubes, I could have a 35 to 100 macro. I could have a 42 and a half macro. I got a 25 macro. Any of these can become a macro lens. Not as good quality. Very limited in the range that I can use them. But I do have that option. So the obvious answer is to have both. If you can afford it, you can have both. You have your macro lens for your best quality shots, and then you keep these guys around for those uh, off chances, off opportunities. You want a longer macro lens. You need a longer macro lens for a shot. You don't want to go spend $1,000 on one, but hey, you got this, and you can pop that on. We'll take a look at the pricing here in a minute of these things, because it's really very affordable. Um, so that's awesome, right, to have that option. And they weigh nothing, right? They're, they're, there's no glass in there, so they're very lightweight. You can throw these in your camera bag and keep them in there adding very little extra weight as opposed to a macro lens or a couple of macro lenses that might just kind of start to add up a little bit. All right, I got a couple other pictures in here I wanted to show you. So there's those. And then we go into a practical use. So here is the macro lens just as a normal photo. You can see the nice bokeh in the background. And then there is, with the 10 millimeter uh, extension, same photo. And you know what? They both look great. This is why I'm saying in practical uses, especially if you're not needing that edge to edge sharpness, it, it looks really good. Right? I mean, that is perfectly good. These are essentially straight out of camera. They're shot raw, processed by Lightroom, no other processing done to them, no sharpening added or anything else, just brought in like that. So not too shabby. I've um, got another one here of the Ladybug. Now here's something else worth pointing out. The autofocus, if you're using the Makey tubes like I've got here, these have the electronic contacts. Again, you'll see that when you watch that video we already linked to about these lenses, uh, about these uh, tubes. You get autofocus, you get exposure information, you get all the information, all the metadata from the lens to the camera. Um, but because you have such a limited range of focus, even with autofocus, it is really hard <laughs> to get something moving in focus. I mean, it's hard to get anything moving for macro anyway, but I got a lot of blurry shots trying to capture this little ladybug. Clearly, the ladybug wasn't sitting still, moving around a bit, but I got a lot of blurry shots, a lot more blurry shots with the extension tube than when I switched over to the true macro lens, and I was able to get something much more easily. Still got some blurry shots as well, but I was able to get something much more easily. And I also wanted to show you the, uh, let me switch over to Lightroom real quick. I wanted to show you a close up of those two shots. You can see at 100%, you can see the quality in here. This is the, you can see over here, it's the Leica 25 millimeter f1.4 lens with the extension tubes, obviously, or else, or else I wouldn't be this close. And it looks great, right? It's, it's pretty nice and sharp. Uh, it is shot at f3.5, so not quite wide open. Uh, we have a little bit of depth of field, not much. And then compared to the shot with the uh, the true macro lens in there, and you can see on there it's looking very, very nice and sharp as well. So, you know, they both look great at that distance as a standard one-to-one -one shot. Um, I think they're looking just fine. Both of them look very, very good. But, again, that edges are where things are going to really fall apart. So. Let's take a quick look where to get these things. Um, before, I just want to remind you the way that we operate here on this show. We operate in something we call a value for value proposition. If you feel like you have taken value, gained value, learned something from today's show, then we would most certainly appreciate it if you provide value back. And one of the best ways that you can do that on a show like today's show is quite simply to visit the affiliate store. Um, if you click on any of the links down below, you will be taken to an affiliate page, and anything you purchase on there earns us a couple of bucks, which on a adapter like this, um, it's an easy purchase. So there's the pack. I think that's the pack that I had, $24. Um, I'm not sure what the differences are here, actually. So there's, oh, that one's a 10 and 16 millimeter kit, so that's not quite what I had. Um, this is a 10 and 16, I don't know. There's a bunch of differences in here. It's different plastic, oh, different colors even. Very exciting, totally different products. All right, this is the link that's down below. This is the pack that I got. It's interesting. It shows that it's a 10 and a 16 pack now, but what I have is a 10 and a 14, so it looks like they might have changed it a little bit, um, but that's obviously fine. There you go. So 10 and a 16 pack for $24 to make basically any lens you've got into a macro lens. Not too shabby at all. Compare that to the macro lens, the 30 mil macro lens at $300. Not bad at all. $300 for a true macro lens. That is actually a really good price, and it is a very, very good lens. I like this lens a lot. Now, if you go up to a 42 or 45 millimeter Panasonic macro lens, this is considerably more expensive, but it's also a Leica lens. I didn't do any tests with this one uh, for this comparison, but that Leica lens at $800 is a little bit of a longer lens, gets you a bit closer, obviously a bit more expensive. It's Leica glass, a bit better quality, and so on. So, you know, it, it's kind of a what what is more important to you. The differences between having a 30 millimeter versus a 45 millimeter, so that's a 60 versus a 90 effective focal length at full frame, 
is your distance to subject. Right? If you're shooting flowers, then you can get pretty close to them. If you're shooting bugs, you get that close, the bugs tend to run away. Um, if you're shooting something poisonous like a scorpion, you want to be like on the other side of the room. So you, you just, you know, you got to be careful of what you're shooting, keep, keep that in mind, what you're going to actually photograph, which type of uh, lens, macro lens you want. Uh, but again, if you take one of these tubes and you put these on, say, a 100 millimeter, 200 millimeter lens, you're going to get some pretty good macro capability at some pretty good distance. So different things depending on what you are after. So there's your cost, your cost, wow, that was where that came from. There's your cost comparison, your, um, your, your clarity, <laughs> your, your quality comparison, uh, your convenience comparison. Clearly a lot more convenient to have the macro lens, uh, especially if you're going to go from close to far and so on. But otherwise, that's basically what you got. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. I hope that was informational and informative and educate, you know, all those things. Anyway, you know what the deal. If you like the show, subscribe, visit that photojoseph.com slash support page, click on an affiliate link down below. All those things help us out. And if you got any questions and you're watching the live show, we are going to switch over to the Q&A right now.